Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I just made myself a cup of coffee. I know that the scenery looks a bit different in this video and that's because I have officially moved out of my old apartment. But anyway, in this video I thought it would be a really good idea to talk about CVs. When I was graduating university back in 2018, I did a lot of research about CVs. And I also talked to many people at international career fairs about how to build a CV that would get me interviews. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that I truly hope that you weren't affected by the layoffs that are going around for the last few months. And if you did get affected, I'm truly sorry and I truly hope that things will get better very soon. So besides the CV tips, I will also show you the CV that I personally used to apply to software engineering roles and the CV that ultimately got me into big tech. In my opinion, the formula for creating a great CV is to pay very close attention to three things. First of all, the CV structure. Secondly, the order of the content. And lastly, the writing style. So let's get started. In terms of structure, first and foremost, the CV should be very professional and it should be easy to read. And surprisingly, there are a lot of things that go into creating such a CV. Starting off with the fact that it shouldn't be longer than one page. I saw someone on Reddit once literally creating a CV for Elon Musk to prove that if his experience fits on a single A4 page, then there's no reason for any of us to need more than that. And let's be honest, at the initial hiring stage, no one's going to spend more than a few seconds on our CV anyway, so... Cutting sentences out of our CV can be a very humbling experience at times, but I do believe that in this case, less is more. Another thing that's quite important is that the font should be professional and very clean. And there's really no need to reinvent the wheel here. You can use very famous and very well-known fonts like Times New Roman or Arial. Arial? I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Also, you should never add a photo to your CV, especially if you're applying to a job in the US or in the UK. You should add some contact information, such as your email and perhaps your phone number, but you don't really need to add all of your contact information. For example, I don't think it is necessary to add your complete address. Another tip that will make your life much easier is to use a nice, clean template for your CV. Even if you host your CV online or you have an online portfolio, it is still good to have a PDF version of your CV because that's the format that the vast majority of job applications will require. I personally use a template from Overleaf, which is an online LaTeX editor, and I really like it and I find it quite easy to adapt and to extend. So once you have a nice single page CV template picked out and you have the fonts and everything else sorted out, it's time to populate the CV. And the order in which we do so is very important. You should always put the most relevant aspect of your career first, literally to make sure that everyone sees it. This could be your most recent job, your PhD, or like your startup, but make sure to highlight the most impressive part of your career. Typically, you should start by listing out your experience from the most recent to the oldest, followed by your education and then your skills. Personally, I like to add the technical and the soft skills in a bullet point format so that it's very easy to read and it's very eye-catchy. If you have an online portfolio or a website or even just a nice GitHub profile, I would suggest to add them at the beginning of the CV as well. You can also list some hobbies at the very bottom of the CV if you want, but I would definitely keep it short and preferably in bullet points. It might give it a nice touch if you have interesting hobbies, but I think unless you're applying to a small startup where people care more about this type of stuff, I don't think it makes a big difference. Once you have your experience and your education and your skills written down, it's time to actually write about what you did for each of these roles. This is probably the most important part of the CV, and it's arguably also the part where we struggle the most. There are a few things to keep in mind here. First of all, we want to be very specific. Secondly, we want to always write in the first person. And lastly, we want to focus on the impact that we had. Each bullet point on your CV is going to be a job or project that you worked on, and you should write about those in a way that highlights the impact that you had on the project or on the company itself even. This is also where you should use keywords that match the job description of the job that you're applying for. For software engineers, for example, we should always use sentences that start with I created or I developed something because this highlights the impact that we had, even if it was a group project. And then we should go on to explain what exactly we did. For example, I created a batch processing system to automate customer payments. And then you should be specific about the technologies that you use to achieve that. For example, this could sound like 
I developed a batch processing system to automate customer payments using Kubernetes and Docker and DynamoDB and AWS Lambda. And finally, the last step is to highlight the impact that the parts that you developed in the project had on the company or on your organization. So for example, I created or I developed this batch processing system to automate customer payments using Kubernetes and DynamoDB and AWS Lambda. Um, this way, automating the process and saving hundreds of hours of engineering effort per month. I think you get the idea. It's basically to highlight what was the benefit of all this work. And this is what you should try to do for every single project that is relevant to the job you're applying for. You should try to explain it in a way that really shows the hiring manager what you did, what you know, and what was the impact that you had. Because this shows the hiring manager, first of all, that you can deliver. Second of all, that you can learn fast. And lastly, also, he will be able to see very clearly what are the technologies that you know and that you can work with. You should always try to match these sentences with the keywords that are in the job description. So if you're applying for five different jobs, you will probably end up creating five different CVs because you should really tailor every sentence in every project or kind of pick the most relevant projects from your career to match what the hiring managers are expecting and what experience they're looking for. But yeah, this is very important. In the end, you will create as many unique CVs as jobs that you're applying to. I'm sure you've heard this very famous quote, perfection is achieved not when there's nothing else to add, but rather when there's nothing else to take away. I truly believe that this applies very well to CVs. Now, the most impressive way to showcase your experience and your skills is to host your CV and your work portfolio online. Ideally with your own domain name because it makes it look way more professional. And I will show you exactly how to do that. So a good and very affordable way to host your CV online is to go to hostinger.com and simply pick one of their plans. As I said, it is pretty affordable. It starts at $2.99 per month and you can get another 10% off with my code CSJackie. Hostinger is kind of like an all-in-one website solution. You can build websites with it, you can register domains, you can also create business addresses, for example, uh, at csjackie.com, that's my business address. On top of that, it gives you unlimited SSL certificates and it has a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee, which is quite good. It also offers managed WordPress hosting, which is really good because many people are very familiar with WordPress already. And it has a super intuitive website builder, which makes it really easy to set up a fully functional dynamic website in just a few hours. It also offers e-commerce tools so you can set up an online shop on your website and they take no commission from the sales. And on top of all of this, Hostinger also has an AI toolkit which we can use to design logos or to design our website or even to write content for our website. So if you select the two-year business web hosting plan, which is already on a pretty decent discount, you can get an additional 10% off with the code CSJackie. I went ahead and I created my own website using their AI toolkit and it turned out pretty nice. I will definitely use the e-commerce tools if I ever want to sell any digital products because it was honestly so easy to integrate. I'm quite impressed and I think it is a really good hosting platform if you ever need one. So if you're interested in hosting your CV online or you just want to build a personal website, you can go to hostinger.com slash csjackie and you can use my code csjackie for an additional 10% off on all the yearly plans. This is a limited time deal, so hurry up. And yeah, I hope you enjoy Hostinger if you decide to try it out. Big thank you to Hostinger for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now let's move on to my own CV. So now let's have a look together at the CV that I used to apply to tech companies roughly two years ago. This CV is obviously not up to date because it doesn't contain my most recent experience but it is exactly the CV that I used to apply, so I thought it would be good to show you guys. I did remove a few things for privacy reasons, but I still think it's a pretty valid example. This is Overleaf, the online LaTeX editor that I mentioned, and I picked this very simple, clean template. So right at the top, we just have my name and some contact information. I decided not to link my GitHub on my CV because it just isn't that impressive. Moving on, as you can see, I start by listing out my experience and then my education, my skills, some courses I took, and finally the languages that I can speak. I have Etsheet, which is a platform that I built with two friends of mine. It is an automated trading journal for cryptocurrency exchanges, and it was built mostly using AWS. Again, here I'm using sentences that describe what I personally did for the project. For example, built a serverless architecture, 
with AWS Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB, and SQS, and created a front end using React. And then I add that EdSheet serves real customers worldwide. And then I have my experience as a software developer at Rolls Royce and as a graduate aerospace engineer also at Rolls Royce. Here's another good sample sentence. I developed an analytics web app using Python to fetch and process data that reduces expert analysis time by one week. Or for example, I built a React frontend and integrated it into an existing app to run aircraft maintenance forecasts, generating an estimated benefit of a million dollars for 2021. Then we have my education. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree from the University of Aveiro in mechanical engineering, as most of you know. I added my grades and I looked up what was the equivalent of my grades in the UK system because I was applying mostly to UK based jobs. So this is another good tip if you're applying from abroad. Look up what is the grading system of the country you're applying to and try to convert your grades to it. In the skills, I have the languages that I'm comfortable with, Java, TypeScript, Python and JavaScript. And then others such as AWS, React, SQL and NoSQL, Bash and Linux, Machine Learning Basics, etc. Because I don't have a computer science background, I listed some courses that I did, but I think this is not really necessary if you do have a degree in the field. So I did the full stack web development career path from Code Academy, which is roughly a 300 hour course. And I did the introduction to JavaScript, which was 70 hours. I also had a 40 hour training in systems engineering when I was at Rolls-Royce. And I also have some certificates from learning English and German, so I listed them here. And then last, I have the languages that I speak. This might not be as relevant when you apply to the UK or the US, but for example, if you apply to Germany, uh, they do want to know whether you speak German or not. These are all the tips and the tricks that I had to share about building good CVs. I hope they were helpful. And if you have any other tips or if you have a different opinion from mine, make sure to share in the comments. I would love to read them. And it's also just good for everyone to kind of like learn from each other in the community. So make sure to leave your best tips in the comments. Oof. Now I deserve another coffee. I've been seeking for the glory. Say, say, say my name.